Hey guys, this is going to carry here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over briefly my opinion on all the epic characters in the game. And so I was thinking back to when I was newer at the game and I was trying to I was trying to find content on YouTube, what I personally look for. And this is something that I wanted to find early in the game. And so hopefully this helps. Hopefully people uh, find this useful. Probably going to do a two-parter on this just because uh, as I was recording it, I went like really long. And so... I uh, don't want to just drop a 45 minute video on you guys. So part one, reviewing all the epic characters starting right now. Horton, Horton's solid. He's not not great. He got the two hit, uh, decreased attack. I think if you're a newer player, he's actually okay um, to get you through some dungeons and stuff, but nothing too crazy. Got Oathbound here. I, I do, okay, Oathbound here. I think he's he's pretty good. If you are if you don't have a better attack down character for clan boss, that's pretty much the only use I can see for him. I haven't seen too much of a use for this guy just yet. Not too good. Uh, Nightmare is a pretty solid like uh, burster for arena. I think that's pretty much where I would use him. Um, in some dungeons, he he does pretty well. I believe one of them. I've seen I've seen videos where this guy hits insanely hard. I got this uh, this chick. I think she, uh, Rowan's actually pretty interesting, um, because she's one of the only characters. I correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe she's the only character that has damage based off speed, and I think that's really cool. I wonder what the ratios are. See, like stuff like this is really hard to speculate in this game because I don't have the modifiers. Like, what if this is like a point zero one? the uh, modifier would just be I, I wouldn't even look at it again but in this game since they don't give us the numbers i have to the only thing i can do is either look to someone that has built her and put a ton of speed on her uh, or i have to try her myself which is frustrating but she does have a pretty cool uh a3 here with attack oh one enemy four times each it has a 50 percent chance of losing a five percent poison so pretty good and it, void epic though so kind of hard to get she also has you know, a pretty mediocre aura uh, Zer, I haven't seen too much about him. Warcaster, kind of cool because he has block damage buff, but nothing too great. Bandlers in general are just not a good faction. A lot of good epics in the high elves here. We got Royal Guard, love Royal Guard. He's really good in spy really good in all dungeons. Um, for like speed clearing, he has this max HP move that's really good for spider. He's also brings a lot of utility too. He has a defense set on his A1. He has a turn meter reduction on his A3. So he's just all around great character. Um, he's also a character I'd build multiple of if you could, uh, if you get like two, even three of them, I would build them all up. I have two currently and I wish I had three. Tyrell is probably my most used epic by far i got him and ever since i got him very early on in the game i think i pulled him within a month of playing and i've, I've he's never left most of my teams ever since i have him fully booked use him everywhere use him in clan boss use him in every dungeon he's just super good uh two hit on his uh a one uh consist 100 uh, defense down when fully booked and he has a turn meter reduction as a three he's just insane uh i would say he's like yeah, legendary level then also is really good he's you know, um, he has a three turn cooldown on a defense down. He heals everyone. He also has a sleep that you wouldn't proc much, but it's okay on his A1. For a support character, it's just, you know, the A1 usually not that good. And then it takes a lot of to decrease the duration of all enemy buffs by one, which is kind of meh, but mainly you're going to take him as a support character. And so um, he has a little bit of CC and uh, a three turn defense up, which is great. Uh, I haven't seen too much Virgus. He's not too good. Marksman, a, a lot of just kind of rule of thumb. A lot of the single target damage dealing characters are really not that good. Jingle Heart Hunter is pretty solid. I, I've seen him used in Arena. He was used for the Sir Nicholas fusion, I believe. Um, if they keep the same fusion requirements, definitely hold on to him. Um, 24% uh, speed aura is very good in Arena. You know, he has D, he has CC, just solid character. Battle Sage is really good too. Attacks all enemies, also has a uh, this is kind of interesting. Removes all uh, debuffs on all allies and then places a 50% uh, um, increased attack buff on all allies for two turns. This buff can't be removed. And then also has a revive on death on a four turn cooldown when booked. Also doesn't take many bucks. That's kind of cool. Yeah, like one, two, three, uh, seven bucks total. I mean, if you get lucky, you know, you could get away with barely booking and you have a really good character there. Uh, Exemplar, I haven't seen too much uh, use for her. She does have a three hit with Weekend. It's just not too great. It doesn't really bring, the like, other characters bring a lot more utility than her. And she's pretty rare, really relatively rare being a Void Epic. All right, now, Sacred Word, I need to go faster. Uh, Candidus, not too much use. Um, Adriel, I haven't seen too much either. Reflect damage buff is actually kind of, you know, it's, it's unique. 
Uh, Frostbringer is really good in Arena and uh, probably Faction Wars. We got Hope here. Increases duration of buffs. Not very good. Not a very good character here. Um, in Hope. Uh, Talia, I thought she was better. Like, I remember, like, oh, yeah, we're on Talia. I, I remember looking at her and I thinking she was a pretty good character, but now that I've reviewed her, like, looking back at, at this character, I think she's okay. I think for a mid, mid to late-ish game, um, if you're mid-game, you're going to get a lot of use out of her in arena and dungeons. Three hit on A1, which is great. Places a 25% increased attack and a increased crit rate on this champion. I don't like that. And then only it has need synergy with uh, Phoenix for the bombs. And then places a counterattack buff on this champion for two turns. It has a 70% chance of placing weaken on the enemy for two turns. Like, it's like, I think she's okay for clan boss mid-ish game, if that's a word. But there's just so many better characters, and she's very selfish. Like, I, I say Arena. She's another one of those Arena-only characters. If you had her early, you ended up investing in her. She'll be good in Faction Wars, but that's about it. Juliana, she's very good, in, especially... She's very good damage there for Clan Boss, and that's pretty much it. Her kit doesn't really work in, in other areas in the game. She's okay, but it's going to be... Clan boss only character. Aothar is another example. He's good in dragon. Oh, actually, I should say both of these characters are good in dragon. Like dragon twenty, when the you know some of those high end dungeons when poisons actually matter too. So I should say that as well. Aothar is another example of that where his uh, his poison is going to do a ton of damage and, and really shred that dragon. Ice golem. So both of those characters are going to be good in like higher end ice golem dragon and clan boss. Relic Keeper, the Fusion, uh, solid farmer, solid early to mid game arena character. That's about it. Missionary, he's food. Romero is a solid support, pretty tanky. Uh, I remember seeing him in Arena. He's kind of annoying. I can see him being kind of useful in Faction Wars. But it, Lady Atessa, she's was used as fusion as well. Not great. Kind of a cool A3 where it's text one enemy with two random allies. It's like a long beard. It's a passive that's a little worse than or a lot worse than long beards, but very similar to long beards. Ushi, I he was fusion for Foley, I believe. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but he's garbage. He's super garbage. You can see here. Don't, don't use this as an example, but you know when it, when someone's like universally garbage, the reviews are actually pretty pretty accurate. Phoenix is a good character. I see him used in arena quite a bit. It kind of fallen out of favor. Then I'm in the gold four. He's not. There's obviously like better characters for arena than him, but he does have some cool utility like an ice golem and in early to mid game arena. Whereas the text one enemy has an extra hit if the target has no debuffs, and then enemies killed by the soul cannot be revived. So. Kind of nice to, you know, you kill one of the the, the people on the side there when in the Ice Golem. It's going to, they can't revive when you chunk the Ice Golem. So pretty cool. All right. So we got Mistress of Hymns here. Kind of a mediocre support. You have the 15% continuous seal buff for two turns on, on on only two allies. She's based on attack, but she's a support, has kind of mediocre stats. Like not, not bad stats, but just very middle of the road. And then has a rebirth where it revives two allies, which is good. I, I think if you're, you're, what this is one of your first epics you shouldn't feel too bad about getting her but she's not great and we got cardinal here another void epic places poisons on auto which is good kills target six and increase defense but uh places 60 percent increased defense buff for two turns i don't like this because it's only on one character and then but this is kind of cool revise all dead allies then heals them by 25 percent of their max hp and boosts their trim to max which when booked is you know i can see some uses for this she's not incredible but she is good and then light sword is a character that is a pretty i've seen in use in ultra uh, nightmare clan boss teams he has a three hit on his a1 he's good in fire nine good in clan boss probably can run him in a few dungeons because he has the uh three turn on or he has a three turn cooldown on a decreased attack so he's gonna be good against bosses and then also has increased defense i uh, with a revived uh revive on death so he's a character that not many characters have the increased defense and a decreased attack so he's he's covering both uh survivability options that you have on bosses in one character, which is pretty cool. It opens you up to do more stuff. And Void Epic too, so he's a little bit more versatile than some of the other characters. All right, so then now we're at Barbarians. Barbarians, you got Anita, not too good. We got Jotun, pretty much garbage. I, I don't like this guy at all. He's like super early game. He has an HP burn. That's it. I, I don't like this guy at all. This chick, uh, Sakura, uh, Sakara, like very, very good. I, I, I think she's slept on. She's... I think she's an arena only character, but uh, and um, for faction wars, I think she's gonna be awesome. You throw a sunset on her, she, this moves insane. Attacks all enemies three times each hit has a forty percent chance of removing one random buff. So not only is she almost guaranteed to rem remove all the buffs off a wave of enemies, like mainly arena, but she's almost guaranteed gonna apply stun as well. So I think she, if you get her, definitely use her in faction wars and arena. 
Uh, Tours it seems pretty solid too. I, I when I really want to focus more on fracture wounds, I think I'm going to use him. I think he has potential to be pretty good there. That's about it. He's like a okay arena characters. I have better characters, but he for a tank slash support for faction wars, I I think she's he has a lot of potential because he has um his just kid is very good when it with the synergy when it comes to provoking. You can throw like sunset on him, so he's going to be provoking characters, stunning characters. He's tanky. He has counterattack to himself. So then you're giving yourself more of a chance to provoke slash stun. Uh, I I see a lot of a lot of good stuff here. He has synergy with Kalia, so uh, a lot of cool stuff there. Where are we at? Okay, so then now we got Lika synergy with that with uh, Sakara uh, as well. I, I played a team that had both of them. They take way too many books to use. I think she's only okay. Nothing too crazy to write home about. But she, I believe she was a fusion. So if you fused her. You haven't like you're at least you have they're okay characters and they're better when they're fused. This chick is not I don't even know how to pronounce that. She's garbage, super garbage. She was used as a fusion. Yeah, uh, she's chicken. Okay, moving on. Kalia, very good, especially early when before you have like masteries and stuff. She has an HP burn, pretty consistent. She has synergy with the tour. Okay, aura, all battles attack up. So if you this is a good pull for early game to help you get through some stuff. I've heard that this does a billion damage in arena I, I correct me if i'm wrong on that but i believe you can make her a pretty big nuker in arena i think she has some uses mave fusion character not too good it definitely was if you got her definitely hopefully you, you or hopefully you used her for the fusion instead of actually keeping her as a character well painted food high cartoon guaranteed character everyone has her great character beat aura turn meter boost just all around awesome character and then we got Swy Firstborn, fusion character, not that great. Just okay. Like, that's a, just very meh. And I, I can't give too much of an opinion on her. Her kit doesn't stand out to me as someone I wanted to actually invest in. So I just went for the Harvest Jack fusion. So if anyone has experience with her, let me know. She's, I just don't think she looks that good. So now, Organ Tribes, we got Grimskin. Looking over him, refreshing my memory, seems very mess. Skull Crusher, super top tier, e top two epics easily. I would, uh, me personally, I think he's the best epic because only three characters have counterattack and he used one, he's the only epic that provides it. So he's, he puts himself in a class of his own, in my opinion, because other characters can't, no epic can, can do what he can do with the AoE counterattack. Amazing character. Only takes one book too. If you really, yeah, only takes one book. And when you do it, really game changer for clan boss. Skull Crusher is amazing. And then we got Shatter Bones. I, th I I have a few of these. I actually pulled two of them, I believe. When Faction Wars is another thing, I think this person has a good chance of being very good in Faction Wars. Would be good in Arena if I didn't have better options, but has some cool moves, like attacks enemies three times. This this is like stun set territory. Like I think that, and has a chance to decrease the turn meter. So super good control character. You put stun sets on this guy. On I'm going to run two of them. I, I feel like, and you get so many extra turns, I feel like there's a really good chance to completely have them uh, CC'd. You just grind them down. And then places a, uh, on his A3, places a 50% decrease speed debuff on all enemies for two turns, fills the turn meter of all allies by 25%. You can knock that down to a five turn cooldown. I, I think he's just a very solid character. He's not super tough tier, but I think he's very good. Galcud, I haven't seen anyone use him. I think he's trash. I think Cagebreaker, it, people have said he's good if you co combo him with the guy that he synergizes with, which I believe is Towering Titan. I think these guys have uh, some solid synergy here. Gold Brawler, one of the, for Clan Boss, easily one of the best damage dealers for Clan Boss. I, I, I run him in Nightmare and I get about 10 to 11 million with him. Um, it's his passive that really does work. 75% chance to place a 5% poison debuff on a random enemy for four turns with um, you, uh, you throw the poisons, uh, five percent po master hexer five. Uh, you have a chance for a five turn, 5% poison. Great character for clan boss. This moves very cool when you, when you use it and then you get four more debuff or when you five or more debuffs, you get an extra turn so he can use his passive uses a two, get his passive again, and then auto and apply another poison. So he can do three poisons. Uh, in one turn and and i'll be proccing like war master and stuff so super cool character i'm a big fan of him i really when i first read his kit i did not expect him to do nearly as, as much damage as he does in clan boss so i'm pretty stoked um man eater very controversial character but very good because he has this move here it's attacks uh this champion receives damage from 
with this champion receives damage, then places an unkillable buff and a block debuffs buff on all allies for two turns. Damage received is equal to 5% HP for each alive ally. The, these unkillable comps are happening where people are running one to two man eaters and then they're doing like 90 million damage in uh, like Ultra Nightmare Clan boss. And so he's, you know, very important character for that. Also very hard to pull. I think it's pretty unfair. I think it's gonna, it's good that P I, I really like it when people are getting rewards. But I feel like it's it, it's not in the spirit of the game to just cheese it with unkillable. So that's my opinion on it. Um, if they decide to, they haven't been nerfing it, which I think is very cool. I played Star Wars Galaxy Heroes. Something like this would have been nerfed instantly. Instantly, they would have been like, nope. Um, but people are getting, uh, if you have them, take advantage of what you can. Because you like the rewards for the Transcendent Chest in Ultra Nightmare is actually really good. Way better than anything I've gotten from the Nightmare Chest. All right, next one, L Lizardman. All right, I think this guy's really good. This Drang guy, um, speed aura in all dungeons, so you can run him in Dragon 20. I remember on Reddit, someone posted a super fast Dragon 20 run. I, I want to say like minute 20, something like that. And he ran Drang because he also has, you know, placing a stun. And he also has three times a random 50% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack. That's really important when people hit really hard in Faction Wars and in Dragon 20. So I think he's really good. Dreg is one of the premier like tack down on clan boss cell characters. There's only about like seven characters that can do it. He's one of the better ones because he has, you know, on his auto. You need to book him though. Definitely need to book him. But he has, you know, ally protection and increased defense. So he has that, like I was saying earlier, rare combo that Lightsworn has where he has the attack down and increased defense, but he's better in the sense that he has it on what and a little different. Um, but he is better in the sense that he has it on his A1 uh instead of whereas Lightsworn had it on his A2 and A3, he has it on his A1 and his A2. And he has a pretty cool passive too, where it places a continuous heal up on on uh, on an ally for one turn whenever an ally loses 20% of their max HP in one hit, which is something that happens continuously in Clan Boss when when the clan boss does a ton of damage you got this guy here we got basilisk here i remember reading this guy and think he was pretty good i take that back i think he's pretty mediocre drake is pretty mediocre as well jinzo is someone that everyone's guaranteed to get you know pretty solid okay epic nothing too crazy you know has a counterattack on himself these counterattack on themselves characters i i see a lot like early early um account style a move it's not crazy but it is impactful and better you know, in some situations when you're just starting out. Broadma, I think, is the most feels bad uh, void epic, or at least one of them. He's actually feels bad in the sense that you could fuse him. Um, pulling him would be pretty a uh, pretty big bummer, but he's not terrible. I think he has some things going for him. He has the increased career rate buff and a 50% increased speed or buff. There is better buffs out there, like a like turn meter increase and attack up ones, but you know, it's not terrible. And then revives two random dead allies, which wait, if you're just starting out. On a five-turn cooldown, okay. I would never, never recommend booking this guy, but you know, it's he's okay. There's worse, there's worse epics out there. I think. I, I take it back. He's pretty garbage. Okay, so we got Taurus here. I haven't seen too much of this guy. He's not that good. Flesh Terror is pretty good when it comes to his. He can extend your buffs and extend their debuffs. So kind of an interesting thing. I've seen some clan boss stuff on him. Yeah, ever since there's other other legendaries that came out, people have really moved away from that strat. I don't think it's very good, but it was kind of a fun idea. Because he's like the ghetto version of Warlord and Septimus. I, I don't really see that strategy being employed anymore. Okay, we got Ripper here. Uh, not very good. Ryan Beast is kind of... I, I think I think Ryan Beast is actually going to come uh, make a resurgence if you've built him. Because he's so good. He's probably going to be pretty good in Faction Wars. I mean, if if your skin, skinwalkers are good, if you really care about that, I think Ryan Beast could be a really good support for that style of content. Um, but other than that, he's... In the early game, very oppressive. A lot of people really didn't like facing him. But then as your account goes, gets better, you're going to start to realize that he's really not that bad. And then we got Yaga. He has one of the coolest animations if you watch him do his like, flip, but not that good. Uh, he's a login character, so you'll have the chance to try him. Uh, attacks, placing a poison. It's just, he, the Cold Brawler is just so much better than this guy. But like they kind of have like the same theme where it's like, you know, attacks are maybe 40% chance of placing a poison. A2 places poison. So if you need a good character for... I mean, if you need a better character than some rares in the beginning, you at least got one guaranteed, but he's not that good. And then we got Steel Skull, one of the best epics in the game, especially for Clan Boss. Defense up, can cleanse. This is good for like the punch and Clan Boss. But then this move here, one of the better damage dealers because two hit, 
two hit and has a 5% poison a debuff on his uh, A1, which is great for the clan boss, one of the best damage dealing moves. But when it comes to Steel Skull, if you're going to use Steel Skull, you absolutely need to book him. He is garbage without books. He is amazing with them. And a big difference. He's one. He's a very polarizing character, a book related. And then Basher, um, weaken on an A1, which is pretty cool. Very, very conditional A2. And then tax in it, uh, tax four times at random has a 75% chance of placing a block buffs debuff for two turns. And he's pretty mediocre. All right, guys. Well, that should do it for this video. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing. Part two is tomorrow, and I'll see you there. You guys have a good one. Peace.